So, true and false disciples, cost of discipleship. Those are pretty heavy things. Now, what I'd like to do um, is work next. Uh, we're going to switch topics away from discipleship now. We've talked about various things of discipleship, the cost of discipleship, righteousness involved in discipleship, the understanding of disciples, Jesus as a teacher, and the true and false disciples, and those types of things. What I'd like to do next is turn to Matthew's theology of Jesus, okay? The theology of Jesus and how Matthew portrays Jesus. Each of the gospel writers will portray Jesus differently. So John will give us, actually Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic gospels because they see Christ through one eye, soon optic, through one optic, through one eye. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptics because they're so parallel to each other, very seem to be dependent, interdependent on each other, whereas John is going to give us a totally different perspective. And as we said before, it's really neat to have multiple perspectives on Jesus because each person and then is going to be writing from their own perspectives on how they saw Jesus, and that allows us to get, like we said, we need two eyes to get depth of field. And so we can see from multiple perspectives, we get a depth of of understanding of Jesus then from these multiple Gospels. John's going to be very different. I forget what it's like, 92% uh, percent of John is totally unique to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke going to be a lot of overlap, but yet Matthew, Mark, and Luke each portray Christ differently. So I want to pick up, part of it's who they are. The author will portray and see Jesus in a certain way. The other thing that's really important is the audience that they're writing to. And Mark will seem to be writing to a a Roman audience, and so he will pick up on a lot of Roman themes in Jesus. Matthew seems to be writing to a Jewish audience. Some people in the early church actually thought that Matthew was written in Aramaic. There's a big debate over whether Matthew was originally written in Aramaic and then translated into Greek, or whether it was originally written in Greek. So Matthew seems to have this Jewish orientation, Mark more Roman in terms of audience, and then Luke, of course, is writing to most excellent Theophilus, who's some apparently important uh, figure uh, in the ancient world that he's writing both Luke and Acts to this, uh, this, this leader. So different perspectives from the author themselves and who they are, but also different perspective in terms of the audiences that they're writing. And we, as interpreters, then, we've got to take into account both who the author was and who the audience was in order to understand what he's communicating there. So theology of Christ from Matthew's perspective. And how does Matthew see Jesus, and how is it unique in things? One of the first things uh, that Matthew portrays Jesus is that Jesus is the great teacher. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is kind of like a rabbi going around teaching, and so he's the great teacher. And so it says in, in chapter 12, verse 42, as you have that Jesus, is, there's one greater than Solomon is here. Solomon was the great wise man of the ancient world, of, of, of ancient Israel, and now one greater than Solomon. Remember how we said that Jesus in the book of Matthew is portrayed as being the new Moses? And we'll come back to that theme as well, the new Moses. But here we see, as far as a wise teacher, as Solomon was the, the man who gave us many of the Proverbs of the, of the uh, Old Testament and was the wise teacher, uh, listen, my son, to your father's instruction. And then Solomon would go off and teach and things. Jesus, one greater than uh, Solomon, is here now, and that is Jesus. So Jesus is a wisdom teacher and portrayed, and even some of the forms that he uses, the Beatitudes, uh, blessed are the poor in, poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, the blessed, that, that formula, the, the blessing, uh, the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes is a wisdom form. It's a literary form that was used by the wisdom people uh, back in the Old Testament and things. So Jesus is that. Jesus is greater than Moses, and so you get this comparative uh, with Moses. You have heard it said of old time, and then he quotes things out of the Old Testament in various places and stuff, but I say unto you, he's an authoritative teacher. He's one that's greater than Moses. Moses laid down the law. Jesus will, as Moses had five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, called the Pentateuch, Penta, five, Tuch, book, five books. The first five books are the Torah, the books of instruction, uh, the Torah. In the book of Matthew, Jesus presents five discourses. And so you've got basically the Sermon on the Mount, the ascending uh, of the Twelve, the uh, parables of the kingdom, the teachings on the church in Matthew 18, and then the 
Olivet Discourse in uh, 24 and 25 there. So Jesus does these five discourses that are set off, as we said, by that common phrase when Jesus had finished this, and it's set off. So Matthew seems to be structuring his book around these five major discourses of Jesus. Some people think, and I think it's reasonable, that Matthew is setting up these five discourses of Jesus to kind of like parallel Jesus as the new Moses, uh, as you know the five books of Moses. And so this uh, very kind of interesting uh, connection there, the five sections of Matthew, the new law, as De Silva in his uh, introduction says and stuff. Um, the parallels between Moses and Jesus are kind of interesting. I mean, there seems to be a purposeful, intentful um, paralleling of Jesus and Moses. For example, the infants are slain. Only Matthew, out of all the Gospels, Matthew is the only one that tells us that Herod killed all the infants in Bethlehem, and we said Bethlehem was a small town, so we're not talking, when I was younger, I thought it was hundreds and thousands of babies dying, you know, under two. Uh, it's a very small town. We're probably talking under a dozen kids, probably, uh, at the time, because it's a very, very small town. As we said, it would, it would fit easily, Bethlehem would fit easily on Gordon College campus here, and so it's, it's not a huge place. But infants slain uh, at the birth of a king, Jesus, do you remember at the birth of Moses? At the birth of Moses, where there are also other infants slain as well. Moses, remember, they were putting babies in the river, and then they were trying to kill all the male babies with the Hebrew midwives and things. So you have babies dying, and then Moses rising up. And in Jesus, you have babies dying, and Jesus rising up, and things. And so you get this parallel between, and it's only done here in Matthew. The other gospel writers don't have it. Both Moses, Moses goes to Egypt. Moses is in Egypt. And uh, Jesus goes to Egypt, and Joseph and Mary, an uh, angel comes to Joseph and says, basically, head down to Egypt because Herod's going to try to kill a kid. And so basically, Joseph packs up Mary and jo Jesus, and they head to Egypt. Well, then Jesus comes out of Egypt. Jesus comes out of Egypt. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Just like Hosea chapter 11, 1 says, out of Egypt, I call my son. And his son was Israel. And who was leading that? That was Moses. And so as Moses comes with Israel out of Egypt, so Jesus in his early years comes out of Egypt. So Jesus is this kind of new Moses. Jesus is this new Moses coming out of Egypt. Both Moses, both Moses and Jesus meet God on a mountain. Both Moses goes to Mount Sinai and receives the covenant uh, incredible covenant from God at Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb. Jesus uh, meets God on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so you, it's a very interesting thing. They both meet God on a mountain, and then the Transfiguration. At the Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, who shows up? Moses and Elijah. Remember, Elijah was supposed to come first and things, and John the Baptist, there's some connections there. And things, but with Moses, Moses is there on the Mount of Transfiguration. So Jesus is like this new Moses and is having discussion, discussion, dialogue with Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. So there seems to be this parallel between Moses and um, and Jesus. Jesus is the new Moses in the Book of Matthew, kind of thing.